there's the first coil I wound and that's the half bridge circuit this is the second one. This one's got a glass jar that's basically the same diameter. This one's hooked up. This one is not. It's just sitting there. Coils are fairly close in tune. So if I cut this coil on, They're fairly close. I mean, obviously, it's got different top loads. I, didn't, I felt like I wasn't taking advantage of the full mains ramp off this half bridge, so basically rebuild it in a full bridge using basically the uh, same coil. I'm leaving that coil on there. So this one being fairly close, let's see how that works. So first output I got was sort of similar. It wasn't quite the same. It seemed like I really didn't improve the output a whole lot. It was just about the same, maybe slightly beefier arcs. I've got a PLL stage that I added because I found there wasn't a smooth output when you ramp the voltage from zero. You know, it seemed like there was only a window of voltage ranges that it would really want to output cleanly at without stuttering. I figured, would it work if I just add a PLL stage in between on the feedback? That uh, CD4046 chip is what I'm using. So basically what happens is you've got the output coming from the uh, hex inverter feeding the input of the gate drivers. So in this case instead, I've got the output from the hex inverter feeding the input to the PLL chip. The output of the PLL chip is then going straight to the gate driver. So you're just adding that stage in between. I've got this one set up where I can adjust the uh, minimum and maximum frequency and as well as the, uh, you know, there goes the main VCO center frequency adjust. So depending on the coils, you can play around with those to try to get the best output. It seemed to work pretty good for me to where when I use the PLL stage in between, I actually can get output at pretty much any voltage now. So it tracks that pretty good. The only difference I've noticed is it seems to pull a decent amount more current than without using that. So once it's running and I get my good output, I really can't tell any difference between the PLL and not using the PLL. Uh, it might be like an amp or two more than I'm pulling when I'm actually using the PLL. But again, I don't really notice any change in the output. Another thing I'll say I realized playing with the PLL is uh, that thing was tracking and giving me some type of output when I had my feedback about 180 degrees shifted so i wasted a lot of time trying to set these knobs thinking like why is this not working how i think it should and i finally reversed the uh or basically just reversed the direction the uh secondary was running through my feedback and that fixed the problem i was able to more reasonably adjust these knobs where it made sense it's got the full bridge plugged in and um i've got the uh staccato interrupter hooked up this one over here my external one uh, and you see the output, once I turn it on at about 120, the output's pretty similar. I'd say it's not, it doesn't reach out quite as long, it's not quite as well tuned. So again, you hear the fan came on. I've noticed that cuts the fan on a little quicker than when I'm not using the PLL. So again, it's pulling more power. Can't really tell based upon the output. If I was to remove that and just go straight regular feedback through the hex inverter, it would probably look the same. The only difference again is when I come straight off the hex inverter like that, I can't start from zero volts and then slowly go up like that. That right there is about 25 volts on the Variac. You know, you get your little baby ramps. 50 volts.
you know, so as far as uh, varying your output, that is kind of handy. You know, if I only wanted to run it at 50 volts, that's not bad. 75, still pretty good. And all the way to 120. ramping down now the other benefit is i can go well above 120 without it walking out but the only thing i've noticed which i'm not sure what's going on but my input rectifier likes to pop i've had two rectifiers go on me in this circuit one was a 30 amp 600 volts i've tried some thousand volt uh for whatever reason they're just popping i'm not quite sure if that i mean it's got to be some type of spike on the bus that's not killing the uh, IGBTs because I guess combined maybe they can handle uh, about 1300 volts a little bit more than before those diodes would crap out but again I'm not really sure what was causing that and it seemed to happen randomly at times but never did kill any of the IGBTs not real sure there I think I just might need a little bit more protection on that board add slightly more capacitance to the uh, input this particular layout i didn't see a huge advantage over the half bridge although i can say with this layout once i get kinks out it seems like it it will be able to reliably handle you know up to 240 using the pll chip cleaner output it seems like it was a little hard to set the PLL there might even be a better setting to get the longer ramps but I first started off straight DC 30 volts uh, and see how I could adjust it to get good output and there were was certain outputs you could get the longest little ramps even off DC just the way the output propagated but for whatever reason that that wasn't actually the best tuning for running mains I had to still slightly adjust it a little bit running the uh, rammed input PLL is pretty easy pretty much on any basic SSTC circuit so you know in this case you know you've got the CD4046 but normally you might have a hex inverter Schmidt trigger right here a weather antenna or CT feedback whatever it's coming into the input of the inverter going through maybe one or two stages and then the output is going directly into the gate driver input. Basically what I did was I put the PLL after that. Your output now is from the hex inverter, you know, instead of going straight to the inputs, you're then going into this pin 14 of the CD4046. That output is then in turn going to the inputs. But the difference is I ran my 4046 off the five volt rail that I used on my hex inverter. You know, this is a, a VCO. Um, it depends on your the voltage you're feeding it that, that you're going to get your frequency uh, depending on your timing capacitors here you know it's going to change depending on your input voltage so five volt rail you're not going to get the same output that you would from 12 volts let's say you just keep that in mind but it's the same deal running five volts you pick a uh, timing capacitor i think i've probably got something like 150 picofarad maybe and then in place of here i just i think i put a couple 5ks in line with 10k pots so I can freely adjust the minimum and the maximum, I believe, on the VCO there. You kind of play around with that. What you know, what I tried to do was just crank the knob till I got output, and then I'm looking at it on the scope, and I'll see that if I adjust the min and the max, I can see how the frequency sort of changes around there. And from there, you just sort of play with the output. And I started off with DC, and, and it was really just a game of just seeing what they do. And you can kind of eventually hone in that window a little tighter to where your phase angle adjustment is a little more appealing and I'm not really sure the best way to do it but I just went by current consumption and output if you're looking at it from the standpoint of how much of a difference are you going to get with this type of setup you know if you've got propagation delay this type of stuff I mean if you create some type of way to, to uh, do a phase shift for better output I honestly have never needed that in my opinion because if I use a PLO circuit like this I'm not seeing much different output most of the time so I'll say the the point of using this chip it really depends on what you want there but it's really not necessary most of the time I'd say I've found a usage for this particular ramp circuit because I found it helps lock on better and provide me ramps at any at any type of voltage